made life as difficult as it is, joy seems few and far between. These days, the resilience and grit required just to make it through makes it seem like there's no room for what seems to be such a futile thing. With all the stress, anxiety, difficulty, sickness, and death, where is joy to be found? Manood ng movie sa gabi bago matulog. Eh, hindi. Siyempre. Ikaw. Concerts. Chicken Joy makes me happy. K-pop makes me happy. Music makes me happy. Dogs and babies make me happy. Coffee. Cold Chaparado. What makes you happy? Coffee! Coffee! Listening to people's stories of how our God blessed them makes me happy. Spending spontaneous quality time with my family. Hindi may Friday kahit this time lang. Driving around in the lugang tat-tat to watch the sunset. When people line up for confession. When I talk to my grandchildren who are always abroad. Knowing that I have a loving wife and son and knowing that they are safe and healthy. When we pray the rosary every night. To touch, save, and even change lives. Spending time with my wife and my son makes me happy. Technology, because I get to talk to my family despite the distance. The hope that today is better than yesterday and the best is yet to come. Family! You! What makes you happy? What puts a smile on your face and in your heart? Joy is such a wonderful thing. I mean, it lifts us up. It comforts those who are in pain. And it gives hope to those who do not have hope anymore. Let me tell you that where you find joy is as important as the joy itself. Think about it. Where does your joy come from? Does it come from your passions? Yes. Hobbies? Favorite food? Mmm. And, of course, your friends, family, God himself. And so here at the Feast Conference, we gather together in celebration of all these places and people where we find joy. The Feast Conference is jam-packed with talks and classes and worship and all the good stuff where joy can be found because God is the source of our joy. But let me tell you that there is a joy that maybe you are not aware of. God finds joy. Where? Get ready to be shocked. He finds joy in you. He loves you and you are his delight. God delights in you. With all your flaws and shortcomings, God still finds joy in you, with you. So when strength is lacking, and your joy is nowhere to be found, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and look around with the eyes of recognition. Because though everything else makes you think otherwise, know this truth. There is still joy. Joy is in you.
Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Feast Makati Salcedo's Feast at Home. I am Janine Lukaban, one of the servants from the Production and Events Ministry. Before we start, let me share with you how grateful I am to be part of this community as someone who is an introvert, a shy, and a quiet person. In this time of pandemic, when we need to stay at home and keep a safe distance with other people, I saw it as an advantage for someone like me who is really not an outgoing person. I thought that I would be fine keeping distance and not meeting people often. But as months go by and things get out of control, some friends of mine are dying and some are getting sick. I felt terribly lonely and I knew I am not fine on my own. Thankfully, there are days in the week that I can always look forward to. And those are the days that I can spend with my dear brothers and sisters in this community. I was blessed to have people around me who would always remind me that there is happiness in togetherness which I cannot always feel being on my own. I learned that God is always there with me and there is no reason for me to be alone. And by God's grace, He surrounded me with people whom I can share myself to. I found comfort and discovered how to be more open in sharing my stories to people whom I know I can trust. So I want to share these blessings with you, and I hope you can also bless your family and friends by tagging them or sharing our live stream in a rich day. Please also like our social media pages. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I hope and I pray that you will receive God's blessings and feel His love tonight as we praise and worship Him.
a part of last Sunday's gospel says that for whoever is not against us is for us. But maybe today in your certain situation, in your certain circumstances, maybe you feel that the world is going against you, that nothing is going your way. But today from that part of the gospel, we remember and we should be reminded that our God is always for us. No matter how difficult life may be right now for us, no matter no matter how hopeless you feel, always remember that our mighty God is always for us, for we are His children. And so if you're ready to declare that our God is for us and that we are God's children, I invite you now to make the sign of faith in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we sing. Lord, tonight, we believe in your power, the power that could set nations free, the power that could move mountains, the power that could overcome death. And so today, we declare, we declare that you are for us, that we are your people, that we are your children. And so, once again, we sing who we are in your beautiful and in your mighty eyes. We are His chosen people, we sing. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me.
Amen. Amen. We are God's children. I am who you say I am. That's a good reminder for us tonight, dear brothers and sisters, di ba? I am who you say I am, and I am a child of God. Can you help me type in the comments in the chat right now? I am a child of God. Sige, go! <laughs> now, while you're typing, let me welcome you to Feast at Home, Makati District. And again, you're watching Feast Makati Salcedo. And uh, my name is Jan Silan. And thank you so much for being here. I am a child of God. Sige po, go! Pakitype sa chat. Ayan, nauna na si Dan. Salamat, Dan, ha? Nauna ka na. Tapos, yan si Jay Olaguer, si Kevin, Joshua. Yeah, nako, mga inutusan ko po 'yan na mag-chat yung mga 'yan. <laughs> so salamat po. Yan, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Let's declare this tonight, dear brothers and sisters. Huwag nating kakalimutan itong truth na ito that we are children of God. We are children of God. I am a child of God because sometimes the world will dictate to us who we should be. Diba? Dapat ito ang meron ka sa mundo. Dapat ito ang uh, estado mo sa mundo. But every time that we gather in worship, we are reminded that we are not what the world says who we are. We are children of God. Ayan, salamat po sa lahat ng mga na dito. And again, every person po na nakikinig sa atin online, every person who's in Facebook right now, who's in YouTube, and uh, by the way, we are also live in Instagram. Ah, Bagong-bago yan. And uh, bawat isa po sa inyo ay blessing sa amin. And I pray that your week will be more blessed because you came today. And uh, salamat po, salamat po sa... Pag-log in nyo sa gabing ito. And I pray that God will bless you. He will whisper to you a message of hope tonight. Okay? So again, the feast is all about, the feast is all about the least, the last, and the lost. That's why we are trying our very best to make it as welcoming as possible. Ginagawa namin ng uh, the best videos that are available. And by the way, thank you so much to the worship team. Then we try, you know, to to make the talks as practical as possible, but at the same time, my depth paren, my depth paren. Why? Because we want to be reminded of who we are, especially those who are struggling with their faith or maybe lost their way. That's why I invite you, since you are here, to make this feast your home. So welcome home po sa inyong lahat, sa mga servants natin, sa mga umaated na for for many many weeks already or maybe many years. Can you help me type in the chat? Welcome home. Sige go. I welcome po natin lahat ng first timers natin. I welcome natin lahat ng mga bumalik ulit sa stream na ito. Just type there. Welcome home. Welcome home. And I hope and I pray that this will be your home every Tuesday night. Kasi again, ang mundo napaka-busy. Maybe you're very stressed at your work. But today, at this moment, every 7.30 p.m., it's our date with the Lord. Ha? Huh? At kapag may ka-date ka, ito po tip sa mga sa mga nagde-date. Eh, alam ko naman di kayo makalabas. But just in case may ka-date kayo, eh, you focus on that date alone. Hindi, hindi kung saan saan nakatingin yung attention kung nasaan. Hindi. Nandun sa ka-date mo ang attention mo. Di ho ba? That's why this is a date with the Lord. The Lord's attention is with you right now. And He's asking you, My son, my daughter, I am here right now. You are home right now. What do you want from me? You are here right now. What, what is your prayer request? Sige lang. Kung ano man yan, ialay po natin sa Diyos sa gabing ito. Salamat po sa mga naglalabas ng welcome home. Salamat po sa inyo. And uh, we are here to remind you of God's love. Because in life, 
we often lose our way. Di ba? Life will dictate us, this is you. The world will make us lose our way. But we are here, every one of you, we are here to remind you that God is here as well. Yes, Kevin, di ba? Naol, may kadate, sabi niya. <laughs> si Marit, welcome home. Elizabeth says, welcome home. Si Jaden, welcome home. I want to remind you, Adj, oi, Adj, Dan, Noel, welcome home. God is here today. So I hope that you will receive an embrace from the Lord today. At sana ito lang ang request ko. Huwag natin sarilihin itong uh, embrace na ito. Uh, kung pwede nyo mas sana ma-share itong uh, message na ito. It really, really mean a lot. And thank you so much for sharing, subscribing in YouTube, tapos liking the Facebook page, following us in Instagram. Lahat po nang yan. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat po. So, let's jump into the talk. So, we are currently in the series, The Clash. Yan yung ating pinag-uusapan. And talk number three, it's about greed versus generosity. It's about greed versus generosity. Yan ang ating pag-uusapan. Now, before we, I even jump to the talk for today and uh, pray for the topic and I pray that the Lord will bless you today, let us be reminded of some basics lang for a while. Some, something basic lang. The Feast Builders, we've decided na sige, pag-usapan muna natin ito. Kasi how do you, how should you read the Bible? Diba? Yan muna ang ating uh, i, i, i close muna. How should we read the Bible? You know what? When I read the Bible, the Bible, I always ask the Lord, Lord, speak to me because your servant is listening. That's the first way to, to start reading the Bible. That I don't want just to read a book, but I want an encounter with you, my Lord and my God. So, I must personalize the Bible, my Bible reading. Kailangan, kailangan may mensahe ang Diyos sa'yo. When you, when you read the Bible, God must speak to me about my here and now. Diba? Kapag nagbukas ka ng Biblia, Lord, kausapin mo naman ako. You know what I'm going through. You know uh, my struggles. You know, you know the burden that I'm carrying right this very moment. Diba? Nag-feast nga ako ngayon kasi nga may kailangan ako, Panginoon. Diba? Ang dami naman pwedeng panoorin na iba dyan, pero nandito ako ngayon kasi nga there's this need in my heart and the, Jesus knows actually the cry of your heart each day. So I pray that when I open my Bible, I want an encounter with Him. I want an encounter with the Lord. Now, so solid yon. Kailangan personalize mo yung Bible. But we are also always missing a step. Before you personalize the Bible, you must contextualize first. Ayan. Can you help me type po sa chat? Contextualize. Sige, go. Contextualize. Why? Because God used human authors to write the Bible. God used human authors to write the Bible. Example, itong pinag-aaralan natin. Si Matthew. Di ba? God used Matthew. Yan. Salamat po sa mga nagda-type ng contextualize. Salamat po. Kunyari, si, si Matthew, ang ating pinag-uusapan, ang ating uh, pinag-aaralan for the past two years now. And si Matthew, God used Matthew to write down his story. Story naman ni Jesus. Yan si Matthew lang ang nagsusulat. Now, God did not bypass the personality of Matthew. God did not bypass the intelligence of Matthew. Magaling si Matthew sa numbers. Magaling siya sa genealogy. Magaling siya sa mga connection. Matematician eh. Magaling siya sa kultura. He's a Jew. Magaling siya sa history. Yan, hindi, hindi inalis ng Diyos sa kanya yan. Sinama niya. Meaning, whenever we would, we would read the Bible, we should not also bypass the author. We cannot just pluck out a verse Tapos, read it with modern eyes. Tapos sabihin natin na, eto, eto ang salita ng Diyos sa akin. Again, we're missing a piece. We have to contextualize. Katulad ng mga kaibigan natin, minsan, di ba, hindi naman siya, pag may ginawa siyang uh, mali, hindi naman yun siya eh. May context kung bakit niya ginawa yun. Kung bakit niya nasabi. Hindi lang naman niya basta sinabi yan eh. May context kung bakit niya, may pinanguhugutan, may pinanggagalingan. 
And when we know that kung saan siya nanggagaling, naiintindihan natin lalo siya. So parang ganun din. Before we personalize, we have to contextualize and we must enter into the world of the biblical author. The bottom line is this. We must respect the human authors that God used. I must respect the human author that God used. And this is what we've been realizing here at the feast. To contextualize before you personalize. Now, there are two benefits of respecting the human biblical author. May dalawa po. Number one, you'll avoid the extreme errors of Bible interpretation. Because it's super easy to be deceived. Diba? Many religious people will actually believe that God told them to do this, to do that. Pero walang konteksto. Is it really coming from God? And number two is this. You'll get a fuller message for your life. You will get a fuller message of your life. Example, one of the my favorite Bible verse po. Sige nga, ano ba mga favorite Bible verses ninyo? Can you put it in the chat kung, kung may naalala kayo? Sige, go. Kung ano lang, kahit one sentence lang, one phrase lang. Sige, habang hinihintay ko yung mga sagot ninyo, alam nyo, isa sa mga favorite ko is yung I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Isa yan, talagang Lord, I can do all things. Mas lalo ko maraming marami na akong problema. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things, Lord. Pag uh, hindi ko na alam gagawin sa mga kliente ko, I can do all things. Pag hindi ko na alam gagawin sa mga anak ko, I can do all things. Pag marami na akong problema about um, financial problems, I can do all things. Pero, yun yung sinulat ni Paul. But when you look at the context, the place, the culture, the history, kung saan niya isinulat ito, isinulat niya po ito sa loob ng prison na nakachain ang kamay niya, nakachain ang paa niya. Tapos alam niyang may pinapagawa ang Diyos sa kanya. Pero hindi niya magawa dahil nakakulong siya. Then in his prayer, Lord, I know you're asking me to do something. But I can do all things. I cannot see it now. I don't know how to do it, Lord, because I'm chained. But I know deep in my heart, I can do all things. Because my strength is not coming from my own. I can do all things because the strength is from Christ. Now, having said that, my fuller version na, my fuller meaning na. Because I'm not sure, have you been in prison before? Or maybe hindi literal na prison. Maybe you are in a place that it's so dark. Or maybe you're stuck. And then when you read that verse, it will have a new meaning to you. Oh, ganda nito. Sabi ni Josh, he has made everything beautiful in his time. Woo! Ay, nako Josh. Ang nagsulat niyan, si King Solomon. Isa sa mga wisest king. And, and uh, actually, he is the wisest king recorded in the Bible. Tapos, ito pa. Ay, nako. I see Prophet Isaiah. When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. Woo! Praise the Lord, KD. Praise the Lord. Ito pa si Joshua. It's I. Do not be afraid. Thank you, Lord. Ang ganda ng mga Bible verses ninyo. Whatever you do, sabi ni Well, Work with all your heart. Ay, nako. Siguro, habang nag-workout si Noel, <laughs> whatever I do in my life, I will I will work at it with all my heart. Nako. St. Paul ulit yan. Jeremiah, yan. Ito, napakaganda rin ito. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Of course, our all-time favorite, for God so loved the world. John, but when you read about John, it's all about love. Pagmamahal. So ikaw, CK, sana nagmamahal ka. Kasi ka ang Diyos, minahal tayo lahat. We are commanded to love and to believe in love and to believe not only the source of love, but love is not a verb. Love is a name. Love is a person. 
So my 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 prayer is that CK may made that love that person be seen in in everything that you do. Di ba ang ganda? Pag alam mo yung konteksto ng inyong mga Bible verses. Woo! Thank you po sa mga nag-share pa. And uh, I'm gonna move on now. <laughs> Kasi may may contest pa mamaya. Anyway. <laughs> And I like this parable we will be reading tonight. This parable will not be a standalone story. But again, Matthew did not just write a parable. Matthew wrote a whole book. The meaning of the parable is tied up to the meaning of the whole book. Tatandaan niyo po yan, ha? The meaning of the parable is tied up to the meaning of the whole book. So, I pray that we will have a full appreciation of God's Word today. If you're ready... Let's all pray our favorite prayer at the feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. The one big message today is this, that you belong to God. Can you help me again type in the comments? Sorry, paulit-ulit po ako nagpapatype sa comment para alam ko na nandyan pa rin kayo. Pakitype po sa comments, I belong to God. I belong to God. Father in heaven, I lift up to you each and every person here in this live stream. Whether where you are right now, we have 103 in Feast Makati Salcedo, we have 15 in the Feast Light of Jesus family, we have 20 more in YouTube, but I, I hope that there will be more. I pray, Lord, that wherever you we may be right now, speak to us, embrace us, be with us. This is my prayer in Jesus name Amen Amen In the name of the Father the Son the Holy Spirit Amen Inhale Exhale Ayan So Pasensya na po at ako'y pinagpapawisan ng konti at alam niya naman mainit sa Pilipinas <laughs> At uh, maraming maraming salamat po at nandito kayo at uh, I belong to God Ayun ako ang gagana ang sasarap basahin ng mga I belong to God. Diba? Ella, you belong to God. Sabi rin ni Ella ulit, si Marin. I belong to God. Apple, I belong to God. I belong to God. Thank you. Thank you so much for participating. And again, I would like to invite you to like, share, and subscribe our uh, different channels. And for those who are watching right now, I invite you to join the After Feast. Later po, mga 8.30. Jump po kayo dyan. Ako, para pag-usapan pa natin ito. Ano lang po yan? Uh, gathering po ng mga feasters natin. So, around 25 people and on average go there. But I hope that you can... Ano lang? Subok lang. Sige na. Punta po kayo dyan after the feast. And lastly, uh, I would like to invite you to give. So, maraming salamat po uli sa lahat na nagbibigay. Nako, nine months na po tayo sa taon na ito. And this is, this is actually the last Tuesday of the year. So, salamat po sa lahat na nagbibigay at sumusuporta po sa ating feast. So, I pray that the Lord will bless you. There's a BDO account, there's a Union Bank, and there's a BPI. But if you, there's any other way that you would like us to 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 give, uh, you to give, I pray that you send us a message and uh, we'll send you the details. So maraming maraming salamat po. Okay? So sana mahabol natin yung offering ng ano, September. <laughs> Ay nako. Thank you. Thank you po sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta ng Feast Makati Salcedo. Okay, so let's jump in. The Clash. For the past two weeks po, for the past two weeks, we've been discussing in the series. So if you've been here, uh, salamat po for journeying with us. Again, Jesus is entering Jerusalem now. Diba? Yun yung pinag-uusapan natin. 
And then, uh, on a donkey, then he is announcing himself as the new king. So, nandun tayo, ini-establish natin yon. So, pumasok siya ng Jerusalem on a donkey, announcing that he is the king. Di ba? Nagiging provocateur nga siya. Talagang pinoprovoke niya yung mga Pharisee. And then, he created this scene in the temple na tinapo niya yung mga corruption here and there. Tinapo niya yung doves here and there. Tapos, kinurse niya yung fig tree. Pagka-curse niya nung fig tree, bumalik siya sa templo, tapos nakikinig yung mga Pharisees and Sadducees sa kanya. Ito yung talk last week. Then he shared a parable about two sons. Yung isang son, yung sinabi na uh, gagawin pero hindi ginawa. Yung isang son, yung sinabing hindi gagawin pero ginawa. Yun yung, if, if you want to know more about that story, again, just review our talk uh, last week. And today, Jesus continues his parable. Just hold on for a while. Okay, again, contextualize and then later on, personalize. Contextualize muna tayo. And now, we are now in the part where Jesus continues the story. So after niya sabihin yung parable of the two sons, ito naman, the parable of the landowner. Can you help me type in the chat, please? Landowner, go! Landowner, landowner. Yeah, sige, iintayin ko po ang mga chat ninyo na landowner. And this talk for today actually has three acts. Okay? Three acts. Number one is this. The landowner pours his love to his vineyard. Yan yung act number one. Okay? So, contextualize muna tayo. Matthew 21, 33. Let's continue. Jesus said, Now listen to another story. Okay? Again, another story. A certain landowner, I want you to imagine, ah, huh? planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. Then he leased the vineyard to tenants, tenant farmers, and moved to another country. So again, may vineyard siyang napakaganda. Tapos the landowner poured all his love in that vineyard. Talagang lahat ng effort niya, nilagyan pa niya ng wall, nilagyan pa niya ng watchtower. Kasi ganun pag mahal mo. Di ba? Pinoprotektahan mo pag mahal mo. Tapos you'll really guard everything. Kasi nga, you poured your love, hindi mo sasayangin yung pagmamahal mo dyan. Parang ganito. Yung uh, ganitong klaseng vineyard, yung naiimagine ko lang naman. Nakita ko lang naman ito sa Google. Pero parang ganyan yung itsura ng isang vineyard na sobrang lusog ng grapefruit, tapos napakalawak, tapos may wall yan sa gilid. Now, again, contextualize. When Jesus was saying this, when He was telling this parable, actually, yung nakikinig sa Kanya, the ancient, the ancient Jews knew their Bible at heart. And his listeners know or knew that Jesus was borrowing this beautiful poem from Isaiah. Alam nila yan na pag sinabi mong may beautiful vineyard, alam nila lahat yan na si Isaiah. It's a love song. It's actually the love of the Lord. In Isaiah, it says there, Now I will sing for the one I love a song about this vineyard. My beloved had the vineyard on a rich and fertile fertile hill. He plowed the land, cleared its stones, and planted it with the best vines. In the middle, he built a watchtower, parehas na parehas, and carved a wine press in the nearby rock. So, yun yun. Contextualize, God is actually the landowner. And he loves his vineyard, which is Israel. That's the context. Now, ano naman ang meaning yan sa buhay ko? How can I personalize it? If God is the landowner and then Israel is the vineyard, ano naman ang dating sa akin ito? You are God's vineyard. I just want to say this right now. That you are God's vineyard. That God pours His love in your life every day. Na everyday po, pag gising nyo sa umaga, I just want to remind you na mahal na mahal kayo ng Diyos. Gising ka pa, di ba? Ibig sabihin, kayo mo pang lumaban na mahal na mahal ka ng Diyos, that He blesses you, that He provides for you every day. And I want you to reflect now, everything that you owned in your life, 
Lahat po ng meron ka. It shaped you to become who you really are. But the problem is this. We forget sometimes that we are blessed. Pag, pag blessing mo yung nakikita, okay naman. Pero pag nakikita mo na yung blessing ng iba, Lord, but para mas blessed siya. Eh, blessed ka rin naman. Di ba, may internet ka nga ngayon eh. Blessed ka pa rin. We forget that everything is a gift. We forget. Sige, let's stay this. Let's let's stay on this point. Lahat ng mga pinagdadaanan mo sa buhay mo, lahat po yung yan ay regalo. And I want you to declare today that I'm more blessed than I think that I am. I'm more blessed that I think that I am. Can you help me type in the chat, please? I'm blessed. Sige po, go. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Alam niyo po, minsan, na- natitempt din ako na tumingin sa, ano mo yun, sa mga ibang post ng ibang mga tao. Tapos titignan ko, hello, blessed naman ako. but parang mas blessed pa rin siya? Ba't ganun, Lord? Akala ko ba blessed ako? Pero pag nakita mo yung iba, ba't parang, yun, dun na, magkaka-problem. I'm blessed. When you wake up each morning, uh, Sha, De Ocampo, DJ, Tina, JM, Laika, uh, Niza, Helen, Mina, Marit. When you wake up each morning, I invite you to tell yourself, I am blessed. Bakit? Mahal ka ng landowner. Okay? Number two, act number two. Tenants think they're the owners. <laughs> Tenants think that they are the owners. Let's continue. At that time, ah, uh, sorry, at the, at the time of grape harvest, he sent his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers, di ba may mga tenant farmers nga siya, o oh, alagaan nyo tong lupa na to, ha? Nandito kayo. Tapos sila actually nagtrabaho para do sa grape and then sila yung nagtrabaho, sila nag, nagpaganda nung land kasi nga hinire niya yung mga yon. Then he sent his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers, eto na, yung mga farmers, grabbed the servants, beat one, killed one, stoned another. Imagine mo yun. Yung mga alalay nung landowner, pinapunta niya, kolektahin niyo lang kung ano yung ano, sa atin, yung share natin. Tapos yung mga tenant, aba, 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 ano sino tong mga to? Pinatay nila. So the landowner sent a larger group of his servants to collect for him. But the results were the same. Pinatay na naman nila. And then finally, the owner sent his son thinking surely they will respect my son. But when the tenant farmers saw his son coming, they said to one another, Here comes the heir to his estate. Come on, let's kill him and get the estate for ourselves. So they grabbed him, dragged him, dragged him out of the vineyard and murdered him. Now, when you look at this story, this is a very horrible story, murdering the messengers, murdering the son of the landowner. What were they thinking? Diba? Now, context. Anong ibig sabihin itong Bible verse na ito? It's very obvious po that Jesus was referring to himself. God is the, the landowner, is Israel, uh, Israel is the vineyard, and then the bad tenants, the bad tenants are the religious leaders who were bent on killing Jesus. Now let's personalize. The tenants thought that they were the owners. And I want you now to reflect right now with me. In their mind, they said to themselves, this Land is ours. Nakalimutan nila, pinahiram lang sa, sa kanila. Nakalimutan nila, nakarenta lang sila doon. And since they worked hard for it, the harvest is ours then. Sa atin to, we worked for this harvest. How dare you collect? And this reasoning actually made them kill. Now, let's reflect in our 
life right now, do we see any violence? Do we see any abuse, crime, or corruption? Why? Because we think we own our life. We think we will not be accountable to the things assigned to us. Kaya kapatid, kaibigan, at the end of our life, may audit po. Ha? Huh? At the end of our life, merong audit kung kamusta ka, how you lived your life. And this pandemic actually taught us a very important lesson that our life is not our own. Di ba? That our life is not our own. Nahiram lang itong buhay natin. Ang fragile-fragile ng buhay natin. We don't own our life. We don't own the things that we have. This jacket, this polo, this camera, this lighting here and there. The feast, this is not our own. Pahiram lang ito ng Diyos. Everything belongs to God. That's why, I again, let's personalize. I hear some people say, I own this life. My decisions are mine. This is my body. I'm going to do everything that I want because this is my body. I will sleep with anyone. Why? This is my body. This is my decision. Wala, ka, wala tayong pakialamanan. I will do drugs. This is my choice. I will do premarital sex. This is my choice. I will abort this baby. This is my choice. I will post this hateful post in Facebook. This is my wall. Kung ayaw mo yung wall ko, malis ka dito. Unfollow ka, unfriend ka. Again, we think we own our life. But I'm sorry, my dear friends, to break this to you. Huh? Ivy, Daryl, Kevin, Lane, Nenen. Ay, Tita Nenen. Pagaling ka. Dan, Kat, Jay. I'm sorry to break this to you. We don't own our life. We are not the owners of our lives. We belong to God. I belong to God. Amen? And last is this, act number three. Act number three. The landowner will replace the tenants. Let's continue the, the reading. The religious leaders replied, He will put the wicked men, the, the uh, religious leaders reply, He will put the wicked men to a horrible death and lease to others and will give the share of the crop to each harvest. Oh, so sorry. I missed uh, a line. So when the owners of the vineyard return, Jesus asked, okay, what do you think he will do to those farmers? And then, ito na yan. Ito na yung binabasa ka. <laughs> May nadalita ko slide. The religious leaders replied, he will put the wicked men to a horrible death and lease the vineyard to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. Now let's jump to verse 45. He says there, When the leading priests and Pharisees heard this parable, they realized that he was telling the story against them and they were the wicked farmers. Alam nyo, napaka gusto ko tong uh, detail na ito na ni Matthew na parang uh, tinanong ni Jesus eh. Palagay yun, nung gagawin nung, ano, nung landowner dun sa mga tenants. Ay, de, ito yung gagawin nila. Talagang yari yung mga yon They were agreeing to Jesus. Diba? Diba? Yari yung mga yon And then mamaya-maya, habang nag-agree sila, teka, teka, teka. Parang tayo yung pinag-uusapan nito. Ha? Huh? Parang kami yung bad. We were the bad guys. We were the bad tenants. And Jesus was like, Yeah. And I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will produce a, prof a proper fruit. Then Jesus said, in this new kingdom, listen, the tenants will be replaced. And that's what King Jesus did. Now, when you go to the end of Matthew, may makikita kayo dun kung sino ba yung new tenants na yan. 
I have given you all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all I have command, all, all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this. Ito na yan. I am with you always, even at the end of age. My final invitation to everyone is this. The authority. God has given us the authority to represent Him. Huh? God has given you the authority to represent Him. What does it mean? Let's, let's try to personalize that when other people encounter you, pag nakapag-usap, nakipag-usap sa'yo or, or nakatransak ka sa kliyente, yung kliyente mo, do, do, do they see God's face in you? Alam nyo, kagaling ko lang po sa klase kanina uh, sa, sa theology class namin. Ang, sa, ang sinabi ng professor namin kanina, alam nyo, brothers, uh, this theology class is good. Okay, good, go. Pero, sana ang magsasabi na mabait kayo ay ang pamilya ninyo. Ay, nako. Napareflect talaga kami kanina. Kasi bali wala lahat ng ito. Kundi, kundi kami okay ni Angela, hindi kami okay ni Mateo, hindi kami okay ni Javi, ni Julio, ng mga magulang ko, ang mga kapatid ko. Parang magaling ka nga magsalita. Pero, they will follow Jesus because of what you do. Are you the face of God in this world? Kaya mahirap itong na ito. Second is this. The authority to care for His vineyard, the church. My dear friend, as I end, I pray that you stop thinking only of yourself and start living for others. Now, being selfless is an, an, an impossible task. Po. Huh? We cannot do this on our own. We need Jesus to guide us. Why? Because we abuse our body a lot. Nakakalimutan natin that, that our decision will hurt another person. Kala natin, atin yung buhay natin. So, Jan, how do we live our lives? How do we live our lives? Live our lives. I invite you to look at Jesus. Jesus lived a selfless life. I want to thank the Lord. I want to thank Jesus mga kapatid na, na hindi siya yung hindi siya yung pinapunta dito sa pinapunta dito sa earth tapos he lived uh, a good life tapos nung sinabi na sa kanya ng, ng uh, pinare-remind siya ng kanyang uh, tatay oh Jesus ito yung gagawin mo ha kailangan mong uh, actually papatayin ka nila ha to save them of their sins uh, may mission ka dyan sa, sa mundo ha Jesus could have answered you know ay hindi Buhay ko to eh. Pwede niyang ganun eh. Buhay ko to ah. This is my decision. I'm gonna live the way I want it to be lived. Hoy, kanya-kanya tayong buhay. Tay, ha? Wala ka naman dito eh. <laughs> Hindi eh. He decided to obey the will of the Father. Because Jesus knows that His life is not His own and is doing the will of the Father. That's why, my dear friends, how do we live our life? Let's look at Jesus. Can you help me type it one last time? Look at Jesus. Go, go. In the comments, please. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. And sometimes you're, you're tempted to live your life. Ito, Lord, ganito ko gusto gawin ang buhay ko. Yan ba ang gusto ng Diyos? 
Ganyan ba? What will Jesus do? Yan ba ang gagawin niya? Lord, sarap murahin ang uh, boss ko eh. Lord, sarap pa uh, send itong email na ito eh. Lord, ang sarap mag-comment back dun sa troll na ito. Ay, ah, yep, ta, eh. talagang mm, gigigil ka na mag-reply eh. So, lahat ng yan, what, what will Jesus do? Hirap! Pare, mas madaling magpakaloko na lang. <laughs> Ay. Sige. Let's live a life for others. Why? Because we belong to God. I belong to God. Sige. Reflect tayo. I want you to jump into the after feast, ha? Pag-usapan pa natin to. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I lift up to you every person here in this live stream. In Jesus' mighty name, may we live our lives according to your will. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen! <laughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Woo! Thank you so much for being here at the feast. Maraming maraming salamat po. And again, we belong to God. Please go to the after feast. Uh, our LG heads are ready to, to welcome you in the Zoom. If you want your prayer request po, maraming maraming salamat po. And again, don't forget to like, subscribe this page. Uh, every like and subscribe po, every follow tells us that Mahal tayo ng Diyos. <laughs> na we will continue this mission that we're as the Lord is asking us to do. And last is our love offering po. Maraming salamat po. Last uh, Tuesday of the year. Pero may mga nagme-message po sa sweldo daw po sila magbibigay. Ay, salamat po for considering uh, giving your tithes and love offering at the feast. So in two days daw, magbibigay daw sila. So salamat po. Naku, malaking malaking tulong po yan sa Feast Makati at sa Light of Jesus family. And again, inuulit ko, after Feast, napaka-kulang po nitong uh, ginagawa namin kung hindi tayo mag-uusap. Ah, yeah. Okay. One last is the Feast Conference. Naku, munti ko nang makalimutan. <laughs> Paano yung itsura ng Joyful Joyful? <laughs> Yung kapatid ko sumasayo dito sa harapan ko. Oh yeah, oh yeah, joyful, joyful. So, attend po tayo ng joyful, joyful peace conference, November 19, 20, and 21. Okay? So, maraming salamat po and uh, see you next week. God bless.